Ladies and gentlemen, Tactical Advance here, and welcome back to some more Star Citizen. Now today, I'm going to be talking about a slightly different topic. We covered off um, a couple of weeks ago the economy, and today we're going to have a little bit of a conversation around physics. Now what I've done is I've, I've done a little bit of digging as well, and I've pulled out some videos that I'm going to show in, in a second, that, that just to sort of explain some of the things I said. Now... A lot of the comments I have across my videos are based around Star Citizens and a simulation as such. Now, I know that Star Citizens is going for that model, but I think there's always going to be some sort of compromise when, you, when you're actually making a game between you know, simulating something and not, for the sake of actual gameplay. Now, some of the interesting things that Star Citizens are actually implementing is going to give us the ability to actually overclock our ships. Now, what does it actually mean by that? What I actually mean by that is you're bound to redirect power to different points of the ship, so maybe like shields to the front, shields or to the side, to left, right, and so on. And you're also bound to uh, direct power and thruster uh, capability to different parts of the ship as well. Now, you ask yourself, why would I want to do that? Now, there's lots of reasons why you might want to do that. Um, well, there's actually a couple of reasons, actually. The first reason be, would be, let's say, for instance, you've come under attack and one of your thrusters has been destroyed, or maybe even two of them. Now, what you can do, you can now redirect maybe more thruster power to maybe one side to compensate for that. Otherwise, you're going to be moving at a funny angle. So that's the first reason you might want to actually do that. Now, the second reason is, Let's say, for instance, um, I wanted to pull off some sort of a manoeuvre, and it might be some sort of strange angle, uh, by disabling one of my thrusters. So that is also going to be in the game as well. So you're about to uh, disable one of your, let's say, your near side off, your near side rear thruster, and then when you would uh, do a turning circle, let's say in a Hornet, you would turn in a slightly different angle than you would normally turn. Now, that may give you the advantage in the game. I'm not saying it's going to. In that particular scenario, if you want to maneuver in a certain way and pull off some sort of maneuver and it and it involves disabling a thrust or maybe two, then it might be worth doing. So that option is going to be there. So what I've got is I've lined up a couple of videos. Now, the first video that I've actually pulled out is quite interesting, actually. The first one I've actually pulled out is it was actually made a year ago. Um, so it shows you, they were at, at that point, they were quite advanced. I mean, they're going for a fly-by-wire sort of mechanism in the, um, in the maneuverability. Um, but look, watch the video, um, and then we'll have a bit of a chat afterwards. So I'm really excited about the physics, and they're going to be a strong part of the gameplay. So let me demonstrate uh, some of the features of how the physics interacts with how you control. The ship itself is built and designed and simulated like a real ship. So there's four thrusters on the bottom, and there's four thrusters on the top, and then of course there's obviously the engine at the back. Most of the ships in this universe are going to fly very much like an F-35 would do. They're fly-by-wire, so they take your input as a pilot and crunch it into trajectories and vectors it needs to tell the various thrusters to achieve um, what you've asked it to do. So if I want to rotate, or I want to say if I want to pitch, like I'm doing now, or I'm going to yaw, or I'm going to roll, it actually pulls the thrusters themselves and says, how quickly can you rotate to the position I need you to deliver thrust, and how much thrust can you deliver? And the thrusters talk back to the flight computer and says, okay, I can get you there in 0.1 of a millisecond and I give you this much thrust. The whole system is dynamically doing that every single frame and uh, flying that way. It's really cool because what happens is a lot of unexpected or dynamic behavior happens by it. And then for instance, if we're flying around and in a dogfight, one of our thrusters gets damaged, it will affect our maneuverability. And it's not a matter of changing a script or data, it's actually all dynamically simulated in the system. Now, that video was made quite a while ago now. I mean, that's nearly a year old. So a lot's happened between that time and today's date. Now, one thing I did notice, which I'm going to loop in the background here, is in the latest uh, Squadron 42 update, they had a Hornet flying and you could actually see the thrusters, um, the fly-by-wire system, the computer actually working as the pilot was um, adjusting his angle as such. 
So I found that quite interesting. So you can see how it's developed from a period from a year to today. I can see they put the new animations in place and all sorts. Now one of the actually other thing I did notice about the video, um, which I don't know if it's a concern or not, I was looking at some of the stats. It look, looks like it's using, it says there, mem down the sides. So I'm assuming that's memory. So I'm assuming it's using between 1.3 and 1.5 uh, gig of, um, it's more likely to be VR RAM, isn't it? I suppose GPU RAM. And it says he's running there at 30 frames a second. Now, the first thing I thought is, I don't know. We don't know what rig he's using, so who knows? But you'd like to think that he may be using it something relatively good to test the game. Um, so let's hope they make some a little bit more performance tweaks further on down the line. But as I say, I mean, I'm expecting that to be early stages anyway, so I've no doubt further on down the line that's going to be changed. Now, going back to the topic and talking about you know simulation and, and, and realism now, what do I actually expect from Star Citizen and the dogfighting? I sort of expect realism. I would actually rather have something that is actually believable and you think, yeah, that could possibly happen, than actually something that is more on the lines of a simulation because, you know, you've got to ask yourself a question. First of all, we don't have spaceships. I know we can talk about, you know, space and what we know about space and how things should react in space, but we already know that some ships are going to have gravity and some are not. We also know that uh, Star Citizen's are going to give us sound, if you know what I'm saying, because sound doesn't travel in space. We're going to hear sound. I mean, if you took that out of the game, we'd just be... <laughs> it would just be... It's definitely quietness of flying. I mean, you could have maybe an iPod or have some music on, but, you know, you probably wouldn't actually hear someone shooting you behind you. So, look, I think there has to be a compromise. There has to be a compromise to the point where it makes the game, you know, more enjoyable, you know, better to play. Maybe something on the lines of... When you take off from a planet, you know, the ship vibrates, you know, because you're getting, you know, thrusters, you know, the thrusters are going full. You, got the, you might be flying into the rain, the rain hitting the front screen as you leave the atmosphere. You know, them sort of things to create that more sort of immersive sort of gameplay. I would actually prefer that. I mean, you could look at other games as well. I mean, we've got a lot of, there's loads and loads of other simulation games online. And with any of them, I mean, Actually, all of them, actually, they've all got something in it that actually is a compromise. And the compromise is that, at the end of the day, it's a game and they want it to be enjoyable to play. So, I think that as long as it's made so it's immersive and, you know, you're playing the game and it feels, you know, they've put that attention to detail in there, that I think that it'd be good, no doubt. So, anyway, ladies and gentlemen, not a massive update today, but just wanted to go through the uh, physics element of it. As I say, it's been asked quite a lot. Let me know what you think, guys, in the comments. What do you think about the physics? Would you like to see more of a simulation? Or would you like to see more sort of on the lines of immersive gameplay? Let me know in the comments below. Ladies and gentlemen, thanks for watching. And don't forget to subscribe. Bye now.